Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's an exciting Friday for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, because it's Friday. Two, because my son's coming home from the hospital today. So if anybody cares about that update, he's on his way actually literally right now from the hospital with my wife. So that's exciting news. And then let's just, uh, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is actually our Twitch channel. Yes, our twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. If you go check it out, we are doing daily live streams as a means of both providing content as well as a fundraiser to get the UFD team over to America. So I'm streaming every single day. If you want to go follow us over there, you can do that at the link in the video description. Or potentially, if you have Amazon Prime, you can give us free money by connecting it with your Twitch account and then signing up for Twitch Prime. We get free money. It costs you nothing if you already have Amazon Prime. Twitch being bought by Amazon was a great thing for streamers, at least in that regard. So that's fantastic. Yes, today's sponsor, Twitch. Let's move on to the actual info about today's episode of Hot News, which is that the University of California, Los Angeles, the researchers there posted a recent post in the IEEE spectrum talking about how they plan on removing or getting rid of motherboards in the future, or more specifically, giant heaps of silicon that you have to plug things into. And instead, what we're gonna experience is just gigantic chips with active interposers and basically kind of what uh, Intel is doing with their Project Foveros uh, chips, as well as something similar to what AMD is doing with their chiplet design on their new Ryzen 3000 CPUs, or more specifically, what they're gonna be doing on their upcoming rumored Milan CPUs, which is their Epic uh, Zen, Zen 3 chips, which is gonna have not only just CPU chiplets in an IO die, but actual HBM2 memory chiplets. That's the rumors. So the researchers from the University of California talked about how it's possible to shrink certain server sizes down 70% and make them much more compact by removing just the uh, interconnect bottleneck that happens when you plug things in on a motherboard, but instead building them up so that the actual chip is basically everything that you need. It's a lot more complicated than that, and there's a full, like, really long article on it. So in case you want the details, you can check that out at the link in the video description. But suffice it to say, it looks like we might be moving towards a future without motherboards, my friends. And if MSI has to, anything to do with it, they're moving towards a future without RGB on motherboards. It's a bad segue. Anyways, they have announced their X570 Unify, which is part of their Meg lineup, which is the highest end lineup that MSI has, and it features no RGB, which is actually a fantastic move for the people who just want a straight black and silver design. MSI is providing that for you in the X570 Unify, which would be just the darker version of the Meg Ace, which we've already done a video with the build on MSI of the Meg Ace on this channel, so you can check that out right up there. And then let's talk about a little bit more AMD stuff. Power Color has teased their Liquid Devil 5700 XT. Based on the promotional images, we can see that it is done in partnership with EK Water Blocks, which is fantastic, and I have to say, Power Color has come a long way in the design department over the past few years. This thing looks sick. I love it. They're like 400 or the RX 400 series cards. Red Devils were ugly and hideous. They're, they're, they've made some huge strides. I'm proud of them. But you know who AMD is not proud of? Biostar, because they just leaked the Ryzen 9 3900 chip, which has not been announced by AMD anywhere, but is now listed on Biostar's website. So you want a 12 core, 24 thread processor with likely lower cork, or boost clock speeds than the 3900X that might be coming our way in November when AMD is planning on doing full volume production of Ryzen 3000, at least according to them. And it's gonna come in at a 65 watt TDP. It could also be for OEMs and not consumers, but Obviously, there's not enough details to talk about right now, but there is some details about Intel's next chip, the i9-9900KS, which is basically this, but with five gigahertz all-core boost clock. And it seems like, at least according to a leaked listing of a merchant in Australia, which is showing that it's gonna cost 900 Australian dollars, that would translate to a US pricing of roughly $600, which unfortunately makes no sense for the processor. I, d I don't think Intel's gonna sell a whole lot at $600, especially when you get the 9900K for $500 and then you can still overclock it to five gigahertz. I don't see the appeal of the 9900KS when it comes in that high. Whew. But speaking of a lot of money, 
Logitech dropped a hot stack of cash to acquire a streaming company known as Streamlabs. We actually use them when we stream on Twitch. They process our donations as well as give us various analytics and they also produce a custom version of open broadcasting software known as Streamlabs Open Broadcasting Software or SLOBS for short. Uh, the deal going through for $89 million. This is not the first attempt that Logitech has made to get into the streaming world. Earlier this year or late last year, they acquired the company Blue for their microphone production. And so they've been definitely putting efforts into getting into the streaming game. So $90 million is the deal with an additional $30 million in Logitech stock if Streamlabs can meet, meet certain growth targets. But Logitech definitely getting in on the streaming game, and so is NVIDIA. And a lot of this is coming out because TwitchCon is currently happening right now. But NVIDIA announced yesterday that they are going to have an NVIDIA RTX broadcast engine, which uses the tensor cores on an RTX card to do things such as give uh, augmented reality or a fake green screen effect in the in the streaming software by offloading all of that to the tensor cores, which would then presumably have zero performance impact with the streamer. You add that on top of the new NVENC encoding that NVIDIA rolled out with the new RTX cards or with Turing cards, and NVIDIA makes a whole lot of sense for streaming. This is actually quite intriguing, but this isn't the first time that there have been alternatives of green screen-like features that you don't require a green screen for. We actually did a dedicated video here on this channel of XSplit's VCAM, which does a similar thing, but requires a performance hit because it's not offloading it to a tensor core, and I'm going to presume Zoom and guess that NVIDIA's is gonna be a, a lot better um, just because they have a lot more experience in the AI training and development of this kind of stuff. So if you wanna check out our XSplit VCAM video, you can do that right up there, but it should be coming out in a couple months with NVIDIA. Uh, they're demoing it at TwitchCon right now, and we'll just have to wait to get that out. Rickus is excited because he has an RTX card and he, he wants to stream with his green screen, no screen. We all scream for, Super cards because it appears that NVIDIA's GTX 1660 Super is going to be dropping on October 22nd, which I just don't understand. We've talked about this before. NVIDIA CEO has said that it makes no sense to buy a graphics card that doesn't have RTX technology, yet they continue to make the GTX 16 series and now they're just making a super series of that. This, whatever, NVIDIA, just, just stop. But you know who's not going to stop? Corsair, because they're gonna be making new headsets. They launched yesterday their new Virtuoso RGB wireless headsets, which one, look super fly, and two, have been getting phenomenal reviews for uh, just wireless headsets in general. I've hardly seen a bad review yet, which makes me excited because I love the Corsair HS70s for our day-to-day -day work here at the office. So replacing them with the Virtuoso RGB in the future might be in the cards. But you know what else is in the cards? Windows Core OS, which is a stripped down version of Windows 10 has been rumored for a long time, but it appears that we have our first sighting of it in a Geekbench benchmark, which shows that the operating system is Windows Core system. Not a whole lot more information than that, but it's just been leaked. Speaking of leaks, Huawei's Mate X foldable phone has been leaked to potentially be coming out in October. Huawei has previously said can't say previously, that it should have launched by the end of September, but obviously it's the 27th as of today. They're not meeting that deadline, but indications are that it is definitely more than likely going to launch in October. But speaking of folding phones, the Galaxy Fold, a writer over at TechCrunch has said that his review sample of the new Galaxy Fold is actually already experiencing physical issues. There's a bubble on the screen that's multicolored. It colored, it, he likens it to an amorphous blob and apparently it might get fixed by Samsung's screen replacement, which comes included with the $2,000 phone for $150, but it's not looking good that after a couple of days, reviewers are already seeing issues. But speaking of reviewers and phones, the OnePlus 7T got announced yesterday, and my oh my, I love this phone. I, the only, I mean, the biggest issue with it is obviously the camera, which OnePlus has always been known for because they designed their own firmware. But if you throw a Google Cam software on there, it might actually be pretty decent. But for $600, you get nearly everything that was on the OnePlus 7 Pro. You get the Snapdragon 855 Plus processor, you get the 90 hertz screen, 38 milliamp hour battery with Warp Charge 30T that can charge you to 70% in 30 minutes. You have a triple camera setup, which again is probably the weakest part of the phone. But then 
then also a thousand nits of HDR10 brightness on the 6.55 inch screen with freaking 90 hertz. It's amazing. And it costs $600. Eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of UFS 3.0 storage. There's so much to love about this phone, especially for the price. I'm quite enamored by it. I may potentially consider one, although I'm still of my 3A XL, that battery life never dies. Anyways, let's talk about the OnePlus TV that also got announced yesterday. The OnePlus TV coming in two different modes. It's their Q1 series, 55 inch 4K QLED, and they have Dolby Vision HDR10+, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, Chromecast support, four HDMI 2.0 ports. That's for both the regular version and the Pro. What makes them different is that the regular version just has four speakers in the TV. The Pro version has four speakers in the TV, but then a slide down sound bar with eight channel speakers, which is freaking amazing. The sound with Dolby Atmos support, it's crazy. Um, it's only launching in India right now with no word on when it might come to Western markets, but it actually looks pretty good. I, I think I might pick one up if I do. I, if I don't have the money for it, but you know, I'm intrigued by it. I'll tell you that much. You know what else I'm intrigued by is Tesla's latest update for their cars, version 10.0 coming out, and it includes a whole sweeping slew of slapping updates. You got Spotify support, you got Hulu, you got Netflix, you got karaoke so that you can sing and hurt your friend's ears. You also have enhanced summon, which allows you to get your car to come to you if you're at the front of the store. And it's just a whole bunch of good stuff. Some things such as the Netflix and Hulu support are only possible if you're parked, which makes sense. You can enjoy it while you're charging at a supercharger. If you're on a long road trip, it would be great. I do think that you could still include it for passengers. So if you have like a passenger weight detection system so that it only turns on when that happens so that they can be entertained, obviously it could be fooled, but then somebody would have to actively fool it and then it's on the on the drivers. Anyways, I'm, I, I love the update. They're doing a whole bunch of stuff. Check out the full list down below. Speaking of full list, there's a whole bunch of deep fakes out on the internet. You know, when you take somebody's face, you put it on somebody else's face and it looks like a real video. Well, in order to come back, at the efficacy and the reliability of deepfakes, Google apparently did thousands of their own where they had actors and deepfake them and it's a whole steaming pile of videos that they threw out there. They're doing this so that they can have uh, the methods and detection of how other people might use deep fakes ready and available out on the internet so it's much easier to spot fake ones. And this obviously is going to probably be a huge um, concern in the upcoming election season, at least in the US. It's not very difficult to fool older people, less tech savvy people, people who just aren't paying attention with a fake video, which would then be retracted later, but the initial impression sticks in people's minds. So they, they always question, did this politician really say that he hates puppies and he wants to feed them to children? Hmm, did he say that? Because I didn't say that. But you know who did say something? Alibaba. They came out yesterday and announced their first AI processing chip that they've developed with neural processing units. They're going to be using it for a whole bunch of different AI applications that they would have related to selling stuff, search results, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Alibaba getting in on the AI chip game just like Google and Facebook will and Amazon will eventually. Or have already. I can't remember who's come out with what. But DoorDash came out with 5 million customers and their records that got hacked because freaking they can't uh, do gosh dang hashing pr appropriately with passwords and whatnot. If, if you're with DoorDash, change your password immediately, my friends, it's over. You know what else is over? Vimeo. Not YouTube's not the only shady video site out there. Apparently Vimeo has been collecting facial recognition data from their videos without consent. And they are now uh, going through a lawsuit because it's claimed that they've scanned over a hundred million users worth of facial recognition data. Uh, obviously this is still just an initial staging of the lawsuit, but huh, doesn't look good that they're that they're doing that. I would also believe that Google's doing it, so I wouldn't necessarily hold out. But I also think that they would have told us that they're doing it. Vimeo, stop it. Stop trying to make money behind the scenes, okay? And then just to close off hot news, our friends over at NZXT have announced a new creator PC build for their NZXT BLD program, which is their pre-built system, which actually isn't all that much more expensive than 
pricing things out and building them yourselves. It looks quite great, has NZXT motherboard, NZXT cooler case, all of that. Comes with a 9900K and a 2080 Ti Strix. It looks fantastic and it's in the H510 Elite. Starts at $3,500, which is a pretty penny, but again, not that much more expensive than you building it yourself. And they also have various other uh, levels of their BLD series. So you don't have to go for this Mac Daddy. You can also go with Creator, Starter, Streaming. It's up to you, but the, the, the Mac and Slap Daddy BLD 3.5. And I'm Smack and Slap Daddy on out of this hot news. It's a Friday, I'm done. Uh, check out our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. If you want to sign up with Twitch Prime, that would be much appreciated. I'm out of here. Got to go things. Son getting home from hospital. Ba boy. <laughs> NVIDIA's RTX, or excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>